So the Los Angeles Clippers received Paul George back finally after how many months? Like how long has he been gone? His last game was December 22nd. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. He's been gone since December. Mm-hmm. So he's had a bum elbow this whole time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he came back, scored 34 points versus the Utah Jazz in 31 minutes, shot 50% from the field. His next game, he had five turnovers. Are you excited about Paul George being back? Does this make the Clippers a clear favorite to get out of the Western Conference play-in tournament? I am excited about Paul George coming back. I believe the Clippers need that stardom on their, on the roster. I mean, you know, at least to compete, you know, and they did a great job of holding it down. I'm not taking that. They were able to secure a playing spot without yeah. their two stars. And we got stars on other teams that can't even do that. So <laughs> let me give credit to whom credit is due. Uh-huh. And the Clippers were able to do just that, right? Okay, so, we, so then that's out of the way. I believe with Paul George being back, the Clippers are able to at least secure a seventh or eighth spot in the playing tournament. But Paul George would not be enough to get them out of the round one. So, <laughs> so yes. So to maintain, you know, at the end of the playing tournament time frame, I can see that the Clippers being a seven or eight seed. I got that. It, you know, it's kind of hard for me to doubt Ty Lue because he's been fantastic this whole season playing without his two superstars. But, you know, Reggie Jackson, I think his confidence is at an all-time high right now. He played extremely well last season in the playoffs and now we're going to see probably in in um now we're probably going to see the next level of reggie jackson's career and i'm not mad at terrence mann or Lou Kennard as well with pg back it kind of gives them that extra oomph that they need but yeah they're not come on yeah Let's and i only real. and i say that because of the potential matchup in round one so if they are at number seven they will be playing right now the grizzlies so Let's just be honest about what that looks like. As great as Ty Lue is, the matchups matter. That's what we're talking about now at the end of the season as we're going into the playing tournament and the postseason. It's the matchups. Where are these teams going to end? Because the matchup, based on who you, your personnel that you have on your roster, will determine, at least just from the onset, on how successful you'll be. And that's all I'm saying. So and if they're number eight, they're going to be playing against the Suns? Like, Let's just be honest about it. I mean, I'm not. This is no slight to them. Let's just be honest. If you are watching these games, you already know this Clippers team with Paul George on it, as good as they can be. And I agree, Reggie Jackson for me is the Clippers X factor. I think he's part of their big three. Once Kawhi comes back, that's how valuable Reggie Jackson is. Can you Mm -hmm. do you do you see how he'll skip down the court? His veteran. Uh, experience is so on display. So yes, Reggie Jackson, absolutely with this scheme, but let's just be honest, NBA fans. You and I both know that if the Clippers end up in the seventh or eighth seed, they will not make it out against the Suns and the Grizzlies. That's just what it is. So uh, you know, I have you my have reservations it. about them even making it past the Minnesota Timberwolves in the play-in tournament. I mean, I don't know. Timberwolves yeah. look pretty good. Then that's okay. That's why I said seventh or eighth, right? So if they don't get out of there, if the Timberwolves can beat them, which I, that's a great possibility, they still have to play against the Spurs and the Pelicans. And I think they can. So they'll end up, for me, one of the spots. So Denver Nuggets have been have been without Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray for most of the season. Jamal Murray the entire season. Mm-hmm. I understand Michael Porter Jr. had a recent setback. What are your thoughts on the Nuggets going forward? Right now, they're in the playoffs. They're holding yeah. on barely to the sixth spot. But whew, it's going to be a rough ride for them. Yeah, it's going to be a rough ride. And I don't see Murray or Porter Jr. coming back. I read somewhere that Jamal Murray is not even close. Oh, my Goodness. Not even close. So whatever that means, I just don't see the benefit of the Nuggets organization bringing them back, even if they were ready. It's going to be similar to a Ben Simmons. You know, they got to have the light on court, you know, workouts. They haven't even done that yet. So how do you expect these two players to now go into the postseason without playing one year for Jamal Murray and several months for Michael Porter Jr.? And you yeah. want them to now show up and do what? disrupt the whole offense because that's exactly what will happen go on let yo carry the team as he's been carrying it all year let the other players get in where they fit in Aaron this is where we need you consistently come on now get it come on Will Barton you better not get injured this season come on let's continue (laughs) so you know we'll come Pazzo back on the court like I'm just saying they have enough to sustain do they have enough to go deep remains to be seen so yeah, I have to agree with you on that. They, ooh, it's going to be rough. 
Now, the next topic here is Steph Curry's recovery. And we understand he's out for the rest of the regular season, but he's expecting and he's hopeful that he'll be ready to go once the playoffs start. Are you concerned about the Golden State Warriors? Because I am just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. Yes. And Curry has a lot to do with that. But they have too many other great players on their roster not to pull it together, not to get it together. And with Draymond now on the court leading them, I still think they are a top contender in the West. But Steph Curry gives them that additional push mm -hmm. that just is able to get them through um, the games. And so, yeah, I'm a little concerned about Steph Curry not being there. I mean, their last set of games will be the Lakers, Spurs, and Pelicans. Ooh. You know, and Pelicans ain't playing because they, that's, okay, we're not talking about, I'm sorry. I was getting ready to go CJ McCollum, but this is not even, I'm sorry. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, so they need Curry on the court for sure in order for them to really make a run in the postseason. So yeah, hopefully he does come back Um, because if he doesn't come back, I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what to expect from them. Yeah. Right. I read somewhere that uh, Steph, Clay, and Draymond, haven't really played. They play like maybe a minute or two together this whole season, but I'm not worried about them per se, because they have history. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about Wiggins and Poole and JTA and those guys fitting into that once it's go time in the playoffs and, and the Warriors get Steph Clay and Draymond back. I just don't know how they'll really mesh and gel together. That, that kind of concerns me a little bit. I agree. I agree. I, I, I can see the disruption. That's why it was important for all three of them to play together before the postseason. Mm -hmm. And that was derailed when um, Steph Curry hurt himself. So, OK, now this next one is the joy of the six spot, <laughs> one through six. I mean, it's not a guarantee, in my opinion, just because you went through six doesn't mean you're going to have a joyous end to your season. But let's talk about that real quick. You know what? I was thinking when I read that particular part of this article, I'm like, is it the joy of the sixth spot or is it the need for the fifth? Because <laughs> that sixth spot is so fluid in both of the conferences. Like, you know, these last set of games can really change that. Um, and so really should be. And also, is it really the sixth or do you want to be positioned in the fifth? It is about positioning, right? Because if you think about what the, match, the potential matchup can be, whoever's in the sixth right now, they may be better suited in the fifth spot if they want to make themselves out of round one. That's just, mm -hmm. so I don't know what joy it can be because if you look at it, one of these teams, maybe, i.e. Bulls, may find themselves in the playing tournament. Oh my God. If they're not careful. So I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there is a joy being the six, especially when you're not a solid six and your uh, standing in the six can change by the end of the season. So yeah. At a moment's notice, <laughs> you know what? I think it might be one through four where the joy is because now you got home court advantage at least. At least mm -hmm. that. You know, I, I, I agree. But if we had to, you know, use the last spot in the solid plan where you don't have um, solid playoffs where you don't have to do the playing tournament week and you get a at least your team gets a, a rest, a week's rest, the six spot is a hard one to come by right now. Yeah. And shout Especially out to the in the East. I'm telling you, yeah, speaking of the Eastern Conference, shout out to the Toronto Raptors, fought themselves out of the playing tournament, now sitting real pretty, I think, at number five mm -hmm. in the East. So mm -hmm. that is impressive. Yeah. Now, this last one is um, the race at the bottom. Now, we talk about the bottom, bottom. Mm -hmm. The article references the Houston Rockets, the Oklahoma City Thunder, the Pistons, and the Magic. They haven't won more than 22 games all season. <laughs> but I think that there's hope. For all of those teams, because one, OKC has a ton of draft picks. So they're going to be pretty good in a young team. The Houston Rockets, they have a lot of talent. Kevin Porter Jr. and guy Jalen Green down mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then Detroit, we know what they're doing, right? Yep. Potential mm -hmm. NBA Rookie of the Year in Kay Cunningham, mm -hmm. Isaiah Stewart. I think that. And those guys, I think they have a lot of potential. And then lastly, the Orlando Magic. I don't really know. I mean, they, they only have, what, Jalen Suggs, who was one of the top draft picks. Haven't seen him all season, out with an injury. Cole Anthony, okay, okay, he's not too bad. But do you have any thoughts on the teams at the bottom, bottom of the conferences? You know, at the end of the day, I just really don't care about the bottom teams. For me, they're just not of interest to me right now. Talk to me after the postseason, because they're not going to be a part of it. My whole focus is 
one through eight. <laughs> I wish them well. We'll revisit, you know, what that looks like and, and all the pieces that, that they will trade and acquire in the offseason because it will <laughs> happen. And then let's talk about what these bottom teams are going to do. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap up this episode. Make sure you drop down any comments and let us know if you read this article and what are your thoughts on it. We will see you guys on the next one. But until then, peace. Peace, y'all.